Welcome to worship, everyone. Thank you, Mitchell and Bruna, for that joyful opening hymn. We are so glad that you're here for worship. It's Holy Trinity Sunday, and we're excited that our guest preacher this morning is Presiding Bishop Elizabeth Eaton. So we'll hear from her in a few minutes, but first, a couple of announcements to highlight. Inga Van Weeren will be giving back to her church and community this summer with her Giving Grains Bread Project. Now you may have seen this in the announcement slides that scroll through, but Inga's Bread is homemade and she has three um, suggested organizations to donate toward instead of purchasing her bread. Um, if you're interested, Inga's contact information is in our church directory as well as the weekly email we send out to you. Or if you can't find it there, you can always contact Brittany in our church office and she'll help connect you to Inga. Next, I'd like to invite you to submit your photos of father figures, as well as if you'd like a sentence or two on why the relationship you share is so special. Please email those photos to me by next Sunday, June 14th, to be included in our worship on Father's Day the following Sunday. The last announcement that I'd like to highlight this morning is the continued ministry of our racial justice team at ULC. This team seeks to educate, lead, equip, and support the congregation to do God's work of racial justice. If you have a passion for this ministry and wonder how you might get involved, please contact Vicki Anderson, Tom McCurdy, Pastor Gary, or myself. Uh, Vicki and Tom are our racial justice team leaders and we can connect you to more information. This morning also, I'm wearing my Be A Leader Fight Racism t-shirt that I uh, purchased through Living Water Ministries, which is our outdoor camping ministry here in Michigan. 
And uh, proceeds from these t-shirt sales, and these t-shirts actually come from a camp called Bridge Builders, which is a camp that supports racial justice education with youth through Living Water Ministries. And so if you are interested in purchasing one of these t-shirts to support our collective cause, but also to fund that incredible camp that supports racial justice uh, leadership among our youth, I will um, ask Brittany to link us to the website where you can purchase these shirts um, in the coming week. If you're worshiping with us for the first time today, we especially welcome you. Please let us know in the comments or by sending us a direct message through our Facebook page. We'd appreciate knowing you're here and being able to connect deeper with you. And last but not least, we're hosting virtual coffee hour again on Zoom this Sunday, immediately following worship today. You can click the invitation link in uh, the weekly email that you received, or if you'd like to join us and don't have the link, I'm going to rely on Pastor Gary this morning. You can comment um, in, in our comment section and he can send you that link via email. As we continue to worship this morning, I invite you all to prepare your hearts and minds by meditating on the prelude provided by organist Julie Baglin. We continue with a liturgy of lament. We gather in the name of God, the Creator, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins before God. God of mercy, justice, reconciliation, and peace. We confess to you that we are unmerciful, unjust, and have often settled for a false sense of peace to avoid confrontation. We have sinned against you as individuals in our actions and in action, our words and our silence and our thoughts and beliefs. We have sinned against you as a community, a society, and a culture that embraces racial bias, white supremacy, and hierarchical norms instead of following your ways. Reveal to us the truth of our past, the ways we have hurt each other and the ways that we ignored the voices of hurting.
make clear to us the areas where we have been complicit or have participated in the oppression of those who bear your image. We silence the stories that make us uncomfortable or challenge our viewpoint and ignore the people who tell them. We have not loved you with our whole heart and we have not loved our neighbor as ourself. We do not love all people equally, but prioritize those who are like us, agree with us, and make us feel good about ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that together we may delight in your will and walk in your ways of mercy, justice, and peace, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Let us pray. God of heaven and earth, before the foundation of the universe and the beginning of time, you are the triune God, author of creation, eternal word of salvation, life-giving spirit of wisdom. Guide us to all truth by your spirit, that we may proclaim all that Christ has revealed and rejoice in the glory he shares with us. Glory and praise to you, creator, son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. It looks to me like we're having technical difficulties, so if you could comment and make sure that we're still on, then I'll continue with our live worship. Thank you, Louise. So today in Sunday School, we read from a book called The Color of Me by Linda McDunn. And it's about the story of creation, when God made all the colors in all the world and called them all good. While I read from The Color of Me, you may see our kids making God goggles to help us see differently during Compassion Camp, which is the name of our virtual Bible camp this summer. Remember, you can register for camp today on our website, and you can invite your friends and family too, which some of you have been doing, and I'm so glad. That's one of the amazing things about Virtual Bible Camp, that you can invite people who may not usually be able to attend in person. So send them the registration link. It's free, but we do need to know you're coming so that I can send you all the fun activities to your email and physical address during our five weeks together. And also, you'll need the live Zoom link to participate on Wednesday mornings at 11 a.m., June 15th through July 17th. Today, our virtual Sunday School lesson begins with a special guest, Mr. Ben English of Munchkin Music Makers, who will lead us in music all five weeks of virtual Bible camp. So I'd like to invite all children and kids at heart to gather around, put on your eager ears, your compassion caps, and your God goggles. And let's see what God has in store. Each other because he's going to be joining us for five 
whole weeks when we start our virtual Bible camp. Who's excited about virtual Bible camp this summer? Me too. I'm so glad. I hope that you all can join us because it's going to be so much fun. So that gives you all a little taste of how we'll start each and every week at virtual yeah. Bible camp. I just, I don't know if I can wait a couple weeks to start. I am just way too excited. Um, you know, since we're all having so much fun, I'd like to read you a story. It's called The Color of Me. In the very beginning of the world, there was only darkness. Darkness is beautiful. And then God gave the earth light, like the sunshine, and saw that it was very good, for it contained all the colors of God. Then God blessed the colors with love, life, and purpose, and with them began to create for the earth. God created flowers of color, red flowers, purple flowers, pink flowers, and more, all to give beauty and fragrance. God saw that the flowers of color were good. God created horses of color, black horses, white horses, brown horses, and more, all to race with the wind. God saw that the horses of color were good. Lastly, God created people of color, brown people, white people, black people, red people, yellow people, and more, all in God's very own image. Different in color, but the same in heart to take care of and to love. And most importantly, that God would always be with them and that the spirit of God would speak through them. All they needed to do was quietly listen. Time passed, and there came to be many people on the earth, and they prospered. Then one day, during a great gathering of people of all colors, a child like you asked a question. What color is God? Then a person who had always quietly listened to God stepped forward and gently answered the child. God is the same color as you. Immediately, the child smiled and was very happy. Then the person continued, and God is the same color as me and everyone else. Looking puzzled, the child asked, how can that be? The person answered, because God is great. And from love, God created all people, male and female. Each one of us is made in God's image. From that day on, the people rejoiced in the goodness of God's colors, passing on the story of the rainbow to every generation. For it was known that God colors in love and that God is all colors. So this week we are creating our God goggles because in Compassion Camp, we are being called to see things through God's eyes. Well, I asked you all to uh, create some God goggles this week, or at least to print out the template that I sent home. And so when we put on our God goggles, which is what you're creating now. Do you think that we will see differently? Yeah. Well, maybe. Things might look the same, but when we put on our God goggles, the very act of putting them on will help us to think differently. When we put them on, we may, our, our vision, our sight may not actually change. Although we can pretend that we see colors more brilliantly and vibrantly and that we see big hearts around everybody. Has anybody? Just a quick editor's note here. Got my God goggles and uh, we're gonna go take them for a spin and hopefully you can see what happens with them too. Well, maybe.
maybe they don't let you speak animal, but it's still pretty neat. So um, hopefully we all had breakfast, right? And so I was making eggs for my breakfast and I had one egg left in a carton before I had to open up another one. And that one egg was white on the outside. Well, I went to open up the second carton of eggs and those eggs were brown. They were brown in color. So I had one white egg and one brown egg. And you know what I noticed? What do you think I observed? Were the eggs the same color? They were different colors. But when I cracked the eggs open to make them in my skillet, what did I see? They were the same. They were the same um. on the inside. Yeah. And so even when we notice differences on the outside, God made us all very similar and often the same on the inside. And God made us with love and God made us in God's own image. And so that's how we're called to see each other. Right. Well, do you all have any prayer requests this week? Any prayers for people that you'd like to lift up? Um, I, I pray that everybody be safe and the ones that are still going to walk, um, I, I hope they be safe and not get sick too. Lord, in your mercy, receive all prayer. I pray for the people who are working at home. People who are working at home. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. I want to pray for, um, for all the doctors and nurses who are helping coronavirus. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Um. I pray for the people who are alone because um, um, I think they really miss their family. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. We lift all of these prayers and so much more into God's care, trusting in the love of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Um. Thank you, Erin, for your awesome work on our virtual Sunday school video this week. I don't know about you, but I bet you want some of these God goggles to sport in your own house and your own life. They're pretty fun. What do you think, Eva? So the gospel and sermon this morning is shared by our presiding bishop, Elizabeth Eaton. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Now the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, a lot has changed since last Trinity Sunday. Not just the COVID-19 pandemic under which we live, but also the killing of George Floyd, an unarmed, handcuffed black man by a white police officer in Minneapolis. Just a few weeks ago, we learned, many of us, of the, the shooting of Ahmaud Aubrey. But since that time, Breonna Taylor, Dejan Sean Reed, Tony McDade have also been killed. And how many others whose names are known only to their families and to God? Today is Trinity Sunday. It's a, hard, it's a hard holiday for us to wrap our minds around. It's a difficult, a difficult concept. But we learn about the Trinity, particularly in today's first lesson from Genesis. In this beautiful song of creation, 
we hear in the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep. And a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. And God said, and creation began, Martin Luther put it this way. So also the Christian church agrees that in this description, there is indicated the mystery of the Holy Trinity. Father created through the Son, whom Moses called Word, and over this creative work brooded the Holy Spirit. Later, God says, let us make humankind in our image. This is the glorious relationship with God that spills out into all creation. God is not a lone ranger, and all of God shows up. All of God shows up, delighting in creation, caring for creation, weeping for creation, redeeming creation. I confess that I do not fully understand or even have language to describe the mystery of the Trinity. Probably won't until I finish my baptismal vocation and stand in the presence of God. I can't explain how, but I can testify to the great Lutheran question, what does this mean? God is relationship within God and flowing from God. Creation is, not, is God's decision not to look after God's self, but focuses God's energies on creation. This Trinity, this God, this relationship is outward and overflowing. God is the one who does not grasp. As we hear in Philippians, let this same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as a thing to be grasped. Likewise, the spirit is poured out on us all. Again, what does this mean? God is relationship within God, with the creation, with humankind and among humankind. And since we are baptized into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, baptized into the Trinity, we are also part of this powerful, dynamic, living, giving, loving relationship with God, in God, with creation, with each other. We are inextricably woven together. No one is alone. No one is beyond the fierce, tender love of God. And God is not far off. God is present in creation, in each of us and in all of us. God is flesh and blood made visible in Jesus of Nazareth and in every human being. God is spirit, closer than our own breath. And this is how God as Trinity shows up today. God is creator. God created diversity beautiful, vital, alive. We must reject calls for colorblindness. That diminishes and washes out God's gift of diversity. We in the white majority can begin to see our siblings of color more clearly. We should be color amazed, recognizing the strength that comes with all our many colors. And God is creator made all of us in God's image. Let us make them in our image. That means all of us are a part of this relational triune God who did create all of humankind, each and every one and all of us together in God's image, all. And God is the word made flesh, our flesh, your flesh, my flesh, George Floyd's flesh. Jesus in his passion still suffers with those who suffer. The crucifixion of an unarmed handcuffed man lying face down on the street is the crucifixion and the passion of our Lord. The crucifixion of so many, too many black and brown people who live constantly with the violence of racism is the passion of our Lord. And God is spirit. 
the wind, the breath that moved over the face of the deep at creation, the breath of God that was breathed into the first earth creature, Adam, the breath of Jesus as he gave them the gift of the spirit, the breath crushed out of George Floyd, the breath of life God had given to him. And now church, we as the baptized, those of us baptized into the Trinity, show up. We work for an end to violence. The violence of racism that kills bodies and maims souls. And we work for the end of violence brought about by lawlessness and also frustration, masquerading in some cases as protest. In the fierce love of the Trinity, we do not deny anger. In the face of the reality and equity, and equity of racial injustice, anger is appropriate, is appropriate. But we use our anger to bring about change. We put out fires set to stores, workplaces, churches, and property. But we ask that the, spy, the spirit kindle in us the fire of justice. We work for calm and quiet throughout our country, but we remain disquieted as we search deep within ourselves. We work for peace, but not the passive peace that allows the mechanisms of racism and white supremacy to stay in place. No, the peace God alone can give that gives us the strength and courage to act. The Trinity is a relationship within God, with creation, with us, and among us. Until the white majority feels in our soul that the pain and suffering of black and brown people is our own pain and suffering, it will not be safe to be black or brown in America. And until we feel in our own soul that this is our pain and our story, we are not open to the relationship that God wants to shower, share, lavish upon us as a relational God, a loving God, as a God of the Trinity, as a God who has brought us into that relationship and commands us to share that relationship and live that relationship with creation and with each other. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians ends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. It's actually a promise and I think marching orders for us. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is with us. The love of God is with us. The communion of the Holy Spirit is with us. And together in the communion and community of the Holy Trinity, we can make that a reality. Amen. Our presiding bishop has given us a great commission. Thank you, Bishop, for speaking the truth in love and encouraging us to do the same. Our hymn of the day is Heal the World, originally sung by Michael Jackson. This is a cover by the Acapella Men's Choir, Committed. Oh,
could fly so high and our spirits never die in my heart i feel you all are my brothers create a world with no fear together we'll cry happy tears see the nations turn their swords into plowshares with the whole church, let us confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. At this point in our worship is when we would typically receive the offering we want to thank you for your continued financial and prayerful support, which provides for ministries of our congregation and, as you've seen with our bishop today, the wider church. Your offerings enable us to keep ministries going strong that help enrich lives of faith. And it's always important that we give to these causes, but especially for such a time as this. Again, we encourage you by the instructions that are on this page, you can use the donate button on our website, mail in your offering to the church or set up direct deposit through MSU FCU. Will you join me now in praying the offering prayer? Let us pray. God of compassion and growth, all creation is yours and your faithfulness is sure. Nourish us through the gifts we share that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. Our offering song today is Children Will Listen, a recording from our worship expressions and the art service at ULC in May 2019. You've got to be taught to hate and fear. You've got to be taught from year to year. It's got to be drawn to your dear little ear. You've got to be carefully taught. You've got to be taught to be afraid of people's eyes who are oddly made and people whose skin is a different shape. You've got to be carefully taught. You've got to be taught before it's too late, before you are six or seven or eight, to hate all the people your relatives hate. You've got to be carefully taught. You've got to be carefully taught. Say it will all be alright. 
Thank you to Steve Sneed for recording that, that footage at Worship Expressions in the Arts and to John Dale Smith for accompanying. Gathered into the mystery of the Holy Trinity, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of God's creation. A prayer for the church from the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Lord, we thank you for your church founded upon your word that challenges us to do more than sing and pray, but go out and work as though the very answer to our prayers depended on us and not upon you. Help us to realize that humanity was created to shine like the stars and live on through all eternity. Keep us, we pray, in your perfect peace. Help us to walk together. Pray together. Sing together. And live together until that day when all God's children, black, white, red, brown, and yellow, will rejoice in one common band of humanity. In the reign of our Lord and of our God, we pray. Amen. We continue offering our prayers, inviting your response to each petition with the words, receive our prayer. God of community, you form us as your church. Guide our bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay ministers as we lead the church in these trying times. Bless our prayer partner, St. Paul Lutheran Church in Reed City, and our interfaith partners, especially our neighbors at the Islamic Center East Lansing during the season of Ramadan. Together in prayer and action, help us strive for peace and justice in all the earth. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. God of creation, you called everything into being. Sustain this world with your renewing care. Bless all who labor in fields and gardens. Instill in us a deeper wonder for the created world you have called good and a greater humility for our place within it. Kindle in us a creative and resilient spirit as we care for the earth and all its creatures. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. God of counsel, all authority belongs to you. Encourage leaders to seek wisdom and respond with courage and compassion to those most in need. We pray for community and world leaders in this time of unrest, especially for all who serve in our county, state, and local government. We pray for Governor Whitmer and President Trump and each of their support staffs that they may be inspired to do the work of advocates who pursue justice in often ignored communities. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. God of care, you created us in your image. We are your beloved children. May we recognize your likeness in one another. We pray for all mourning the death of your beloved child, George Floyd. Hold in your loving embrace all experiencing trauma, fear, uncertainty, and loss. Protect vulnerable children and adults from violence or neglect. Provide what is needed for those lacking access to food, shelter, and other services. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. 
God of healing, you accompany us in sickness and suffering. Bring relief to all afflicted with the coronavirus and all those isolated now more than ever, especially those in prison or care facilities. Strengthen caregivers, health workers, and all whose work ensures the safety and well-being of others. Console, heal, and nourish all in need this day, especially Kim, Joseph, Carl, Ed, Sarah, Mara, Michael, Bruce, Norm, Harry, Melissa, Mark, Susan, and Vicki. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. God of connection, you call us to make your presence known. Accompany people of faith as we nurture relationships in new ways. Where the sin of racism fractures our relationships, bring repentance and reconciliation. Free us for the difficult work ahead in our congregations and community. Open our hearts for attentive listening so that our places of connection are filled with your spirit. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. At this time, I invite you to share your prayer requests, either in the comment section below, spoken aloud or lifted on your hearts to God. We pray for all who live in isolation during the stay at home order especially those who live alone. We pray for those who work tirelessly and for those who long to be able to work again. We pray for those who are facing medical concerns and those who are nearing death. Give strength, comfort, and safety to people of color. Keep our children happy and safe as they move into their summer break in these unusual times. God of compassion, you comfort us in our grief with the promise of the resurrection. We give you thanks for the saints of all times and places. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. In the coming weeks, Mr. Mitchell, Pastor Gary, Janine, and I will be working on a creative video blessing project. So you'll be hearing from us about how we encourage your participation in that too. We hope you'll join us for that. For now and for the week ahead, may you receive this blessing with an open heart. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you, the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. The Lord bless you and keep you, make his face. 
face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Go in peace. We are ambassadors for Christ. Thanks be to God.